Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 541 of Screw the Commute podcast. I'm here with Angela Olfest, and we've had her on before. Everybody just loved her, and we love her around here because... Uh, you know, my progression in the audio field, uh, Mike Stewart started me out around the year 2000 uh, recording and edit editing audio and learned tons from him. Then I took it to another level when I started this podcast, it went w jumped way up. And then now this young lady and uh, Derek Depker, who has a nice uh, webinar on all the, the, detail, the other details of audio books, took me way, way up. So I just finished my audio book. This lady helped me do it. I would not have it done if it wasn't for her. And it's been submitted and we're crossing our fingers and are crossing our eyes that everything goes cool. Uh, hopefully within a couple of weeks, we'll see if we got a new audio book out and uh, it's because of her. And she's going to tell you about the voiceover field and how she got into it and all that stuff. All right. hope you didn't. Oh, yeah. So I usually tell you about back episodes. So I, I, I lumped three of them together all about audiobooks. So if you're really serious about this, this lady has done 90 of them. All right. So so she's no slouch. Episode 535 was about audiobooks. 536, I gave you a freebie of the intro, chapter one and chapter two from the one online joint venturing, how to be in front of a million warm prospects in the next 90 days. So you got my practice session, and then episode 537 was what I learned from going through the submission process and the very exacting details that I learned from Angela. All right, so we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to her in a minute. All right, how would you like me to send you big checks? Well, you can make big commissions by referring our products and services, sometimes in excess of $5,000 for a speaking engagement and uh, lots of other you know, clear down to 20 bucks for, you know, certain lower price stuff, anything in between. So if you're interested in that, just email me at tom at screwthecommute.com and we'll give you the details on how you can best promote to your audience and what's the best things we have for you. All right, make sure you pick up a copy of our automation ebook. It's at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. This has allowed me to handle up to 150,000 subscribers and 65,000 customers without pulling my hair out. Cell phone automation tips and all kinds of things that are cheap or free that many of them are right on your computer already. You just didn't know about them. Grab a copy of that. While you're at it, pick up a copy of our podcast app at screwthecommute.com slash app. That's A-P-P. -P. You can put us on your cell phone and tablet and take us with you on the road. Now, we're still going big guns on our program to uh, help Persons with disabilities get scholarships. So the internet and digital marketing field is just perfect for people with mobility problems. And we have two people in the program that are blind. Now, if you want to cry the blues about you're not doing so well and you want to get inspired a little bit or, <laughs> or feel guilty, <laughs> go, go to the GoFundMe campaign and you'll see them making videos and they are blind. <laughs> All right, So there's no excuse for you. You can uh, find that at imtcva.org. That's the Internet Marketing Training Center of Virginia forward slash disabilities. And then click on the GoFundMe campaign. Kick in anything uh, you can afford. Hey, if you're really flush with cash, you can sponsor a person by yourself. Boy, would you be proud of that by changing their life. Because I found that one of the reasons I started, I found out that the suicide rate is four times the average. The depression rate is four times the average and the, the unemployment rate is way higher than normal. So we're going to do something about that one way or the other. All right, let's bring on the main event. Angela Olfest began voice acting mid uh, around the middle of 2018 and she became a full-time voice artist and business owner in less than two years. A thousand clients and 90 plus audiobook titles later, she now coaches others on how to build their own voiceover business. Angela, are you ready to screw? Absolutely. Good. <laughs> Absolutely. I haven't uh, screwed around with you for, I don't know, it's been over a year now, I guess, since you've been on. But boy, everybody loved your episode yeah. and your story. Oh. And uh, 
and for being a used car dealer, you're 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 okay with us. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them about your your story. Yeah, don't hold that against me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, I I know you spent eight years in the uh, car uh, arena doing something. Uh, I forget exactly what, but but what interests me most, I was over on LinkedIn and it said before the car stuff, you spent six years as an exhibitionist. What's what's that all about? <laughs> 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 I actually I was in the the automotive industry for about 20 years oh. and before that I used to build animal exhibits. I was an exhibit technician. Oh, oh, I thought you were an exhibitionist. <laughs> All right, that's no, much no, that's fun. quite a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is, so you did what? You you built animal so it, yeah, so if you go into like an aquarium or a zoo, yeah. all of the artificial habitat you would see in there with the animals, I used to build that all over the world. No kidding. Wow. Yeah, it was really, really cool. Boy, do you had to hold your breath for a long time. A really <laughs> in, in long fish time. Tank. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah. you don't run into anybody that does that too often. I mean, uh, no. I can't imagine you would uh, want to leave that field for the car. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so, so what'd you do in the car business? Uh, I did a little bit of everything. I started out as a car salesperson, and then I moved into finance, and then I moved into service. And then when I ended, when I retired from the industry, I was uh, managing the inventory for a BMW dealership. Did you ever have anything to do with detailing? Um, I was in charge of the detail department, but I didn't do anything with detailing myself. Oh, because no. I got a rotten thing. I had my Suburban parked next to one of my yards, and the sprinkler comes from the um, well, which had too oh, much yeah. iron in it. So there's one side of my car is all, like, iron-laced. <laughs> yeah, clay bar. Oh, clay, clay bar. bar will do it? Yep. Yeah, but you got to do that by hand, right? <laughs> Can't like, use you a do. bumper or it's, something? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you, a clay bar first to remove all that calcium deposit, and then a nice oh, little it's detail. Iron, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's it's tough to get off for sure. Oh boy, I'll trade it in. I guess the but, key is to not leave it on there. You got to clean that off uh, before only... it etches into the clear coat. Oh boy, boy, I've been looking at it for like uh, six, seven months now. <laughs> so, <maybe. laughs> yeah, you I'll, might as well just maybe trade I'll it I'll in. Just then. turn the car around. <laughs> and do the so, other so side. it's matching on both yeah. sides yeah <laughs> so so what made the decision to get out of this car business and go into a voiceover i mean that's a pretty pretty big jump it is and i have to tell you that my first love has always been cars i've always been a car nut and that's why i started uh with the car business what do you drive but i drive a forerunner oh four-wheel drive that's <laughs> Yeah. And you go mudding and stuff? I no, because I don't get out of my studio much <laughs> right. these days. But <laughs> she's got this in little theory. cubicle. I've never, <laughs> yeah. Nobody's ever seen her out of it. Actually, she you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, with she can just order everything in and they push it through a little slot. Like, yeah, like she's in a Postmates. Cell. I mean, hey, you know, I can put a little fridge in here. I'm set. <laughs> so, uh, so this is a big jump to the voiceover world from car stuff. So, how'd you do it? Oh yeah. Well, I, you know, even if you're doing something that you love, you still, at times, you feel a little unfulfilled. And I think I was just reading an, an article at lunch one day, and it was about a woman who her business or her job was to narrate audiobooks. And I never thought of it before. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm a complete book nerd. Okay. Super book nerd. So I'm like, okay, well, if someone will pay me to read books... <laughs> I'm down with that. So then I did a little bit of, well, I did a lot of research and kind of got into the procrastinate learning stage. You know, you do a lot of research and don't really move forward. So uh, mid-2018, I decided just to go for it. And was there any particular person that you, you know, really helped you the most or was just a lot of YouTubers or what? Well, in the beginning, it was a lot of YouTube. It was a lot of YouTube, a lot of just mm -hmm. lurking on Facebook groups and stuff. But then I uh, came across what be who became my coach, which was Anthony Pika, and uh, and I coached with him for about a year, and now I coach for him. <laughs> wow! Yeah, that's cool. But I mean, were you uh, were you able to get jobs and get work prior to? Did you have to take a year worth of training to to do it, or did you? Uh, start? Oh no, yeah. I I started pretty much right away. Okay, you started um, making money right away. Cool. 
Well, yeah, you have to. The, I think the hardest part, especially when it comes to audiobooks, is to learn the appropriate editing and formatting. As you know, mm-hmm. that that part can be a little challenging and difficult. Yeah, how but did you learn once, that? Because that that's that was the biggest sticking point for me. I I think in that stage it was mostly YouTube and lots of trial and error. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> lots yeah. of trial and error. Yeah. That's, well, I that's what work. I told people on my practice session. If I hadn't have done that practice session. I'd have wasted the whole book because it was full of plosives and full yeah. of uh, br- breaths and, and just uh, trouble. So I did like a couple minutes and I said, oh, man, I better fix this now because I'd have, I would have had a big mess. Because a lot of those plosives, you know, you can't fix them, all of them. Yeah. And back then there wasn't the uh, audio lab and audible wasn't available so you really had to just tell them about that that and cross your fingers (laughs) yeah tell them about that what that means well acx is the arm of amazon where uh narrators and authors come together to produce audiobooks excuse me and the audio lab we can edit that out see (laughs) oh thank you (laughs) fabulous (laughs) Um, and Audio Lab is software that is uh, used by ACX where you can upload your files and have a test come back where, like, they go through all of the parameters of your file and tell you what you need to fix and what is fine. But that wasn't there in the beginning. So I really had to just submit files and kind of cross my fingers and wait for the QA to be done. That could you know? be a couple and- of weeks, right? Exactly. And at some points, it was, uh, they say the average is seven to 10 days. But, you know, at the peak of the pandemic, we, they were, we were waiting up to 30 days oh, to find out if everything was fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Audio Lab just came around recently? I, yeah, I would say within maybe the last year or so. Oh, I'm so glad because, yeah, I was testing like crazy to see, uh, uh, to, you know, I, I don't want to wait two weeks just to find out oh, I yeah. suck. You know, oh, <laughs> it's so... tell me I suck now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so helpful. It's so helpful. So besides audiobooks, what other kinds of things do you do? Uh, most of what I do is uh, what is called e-learning, which is long-form narration in the form of online, you know, tutorials online. You know, like when you start a new job and you have to take all of that uh, workplace harassment type of video <laughs> yeah. courses, yeah. I narrate those, workplace training and safety type of videos. I've done video games. I've done commercials. I've done... Um, a lot of <laughs> telephony, you know, for sales, pre- priest plus one, you know, like that sort of thing. Uh-huh. So, so uh, a little bit of everything. Yeah. And um, now how has your equipment changed over the years from when you first started to what you're using now? And do you have aspirations of fancier equipment later? Oh, gosh. Once you start buying equipment, <laughs> you def- it's like tattoos. You just, can't, <laughs> you just can't stop at one. But like most everybody else, I started out with a USB mic, um, really just feeling it out to see if this was something that I really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And once I absolutely fell in love with it, then I upgraded to uh, my next mic, which was an XLR mic, which you need additional equipment for, the audio interface. And then I'd say about yeah, a year and a half ago. Is. Tell them what that is. The audio interface is a uh, piece of hardware that converts the signals from your microphone into simply language that your computer can understand. And then that gets uh, inc- uh, recorded into your DAW, which is your digital audio workstation, which is the software you use to record and edit your audio recordings. What did you start with? Um, I started with Audacity mm-hmm. because, of mm-hmm. course, it's free yep. and it's uh, relatively easy to use. Mm-hmm. But then I would say after a couple of months, I discovered or someone had suggested uh, Adobe Audition. Yay, I'm glad they did because that's what I have or I wouldn't be talking to you. (laughs) And there are lots of DAWs out there to use. But Adobe Audition, to me, personal opinion, it's much better suited for voiceover. Uh, Most of the DAWs out there are more for music production and that sort of thing. But if you're looking into voiceover audiobook narration, Adobe Audition, you you can't go wrong with. Yeah, and some, I mean, a lot of people have GarageBand already on their Macs. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, except, you know, I always tell them, yeah, oh, that's great if you're going to have a horn section in your bathroom and strings over <laughs> in, in your yard. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, I we say just record use... in mono. 
Yeah. I mean, use what you're most comfortable with. But if you're looking for recommendations, Adobe Audition is definitely what I would suggest. And and I tell people, you know, use something that somebody uh, can help you with because you're going to yes. need help. All right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could. I mean, you can. I mean, I'm self-taught on this thing, but I, you know, I just suffered until you helped me. Uh, you know, with those little tweaks that I had to make to to suit Audible. Uh, thank you so much for that. Oh, you're so very welcome. <laughs> and you know, and I found that when learn with learning Adobe Audition, I found that a lot of voiceover artists on YouTube, a lot of the tutorials, a lot of other people that I was following at the time were also using Adobe mm -hmm. Audition. So it made it a little bit of an easier transition from taking what they had were were teaching and to apply it to my own. So it made that part much easier too. Okay, so so tell them uh, you started with a US plain USB microphone, but then you upgraded mm -hmm. to a XLR, which is a three three prong microphone, and yep. uh, and you ended. Uh, I interrupted you at the interface. Oh no, that's okay. Uh, and I think uh, that mic was my Rode NT1A, mm -hmm. and then about a year and a half ago, I purchased my Sennheiser 416 which is pretty much a broadcast studio standard. And I love it. <laughs> yeah, and how much were the costs on these? Road, road is um, a couple hundred, the right? U yeah, that, well, yeah, the USB mic that I started out was just a Blue Yeti. I think that mm -hmm. was about 150 bucks at the time, maybe. Yeah, it's probably 100. And uh, the road was uh, just about 250, and the Sennheiser was 1,000. Wow. Yeah. You're big it's an investment for sure, but if well, yeah, you're, I mean, yeah, you've you've done very well with that darn thing. So okay, <laughs> so so you plug it into the um, the audio interface that makes mm -hmm. it uh, interprets it to go into your computer, either Mac or PC, right? Uh, yes. Uh huh. All right. What else you got? Or what else did you um, start with and then add later? That's about it. I mean, apart from upgrading all of my cables to be balanced versus unbalanced and just, that's about it. I haven't really added much else well, to my studio. Well, don't you have a DBX? <clears throat> oh, yeah, hardware? I do. Yeah, I, you know, it, the DBX 286S is a uh, preamp and a preprocessor. And I purchased it in the very, very beginning because I have a lot of ambient noise in this room. Mm -hmm. My studio is literally on the ground floor of my townhouse and about 15 feet away from a playground and a street. I remember so I was... watching one of your YouTube videos and somebody was riding back and forth on a, on a street bike. Or a, that or motorcycle no. yeah. guy. Oh, my gosh. It never fails. As soon as you hit the record button, everybody's just having a party outside. But I... I got the DBX just to help to filter out some of that noise that I just could not seem to get rid of uh, other than that. But that's really all that it serves as, you know. Are you still using it's, it's it? It's only purpose. Yeah, just for the noise yeah, so gate. So that's called a noise gate. Yeah. So yes. tell, tell, give them an idea what that really means, a noise gate. The noise gate is really just a setting in this particular piece of hardware that once you and it's very very tricky to find the sweet spot but it basically you tell it where you want the noise to be cut off like it opens and closes at a certain frequency to let your voice through but not all of the other frequencies that you do not want in but again it, it took me probably months to find mm -hmm. the sweet spot with that because if you apply too much or if it's you know open too long it'll start to distort your voice so it's pretty tricky, but once you find that sweet spot, it works really well. Yeah, I have the 266 XS, and it's got a compressor limiter in it also. Uh, yeah. Noise gate. Yours is a, a more a newer version. Basically, you got a, a good microphone. You got a um, the thing. It's a little box, folks. That uh, what she's talking about on the the computer interface, and I happen to have a Focusrite. Uh, there's I'm, I know there's other brands, but uh, that's what you plug the mic in and now do you need a um a uh oh what's it called phantom power for your microphone yes which Tell i get that. through which i get through my dbx 286s which is another another aspect that it does for me but it's basically powers the microphone without needing to plug it in separately in the wall because the these xlr mics need additional power 
And that usually comes from your interface, or in my case, my DBX also has phantom power. Yeah, now I'm using the, um, the Shure SM7B, a very mm -hmm. popular podcaster mic, and that's what I'm yeah. using for the books too, because I don't have to be as cool as you. Because <laughs> if I don't like it and it passes, <laughs> no, it's, it's, still, a, it's, still it's a being great sold. mic. Yeah, it's a great mic, but it, it puts out such a tiny signal. So if you mm. uh, if you jack up the uh, the the uh, gain, uh, you're adding a lot of noise. So I got yeah. this little box called a cloud lifter, and yep. it it puts out 25 to 27 dB of really clean gain. So you don't get a lot of noise in it. But it it yeah. needs 48 volts of phantom power. So uh, I have to power it. That's that's what my setup is. <laughs> and I didn't know any better. I got this fancy Yamaha mixing board. I don't know, one <laughs> to uh, eight, 10, 12 channel. <laughs> and oh I God. thought, yeah, I'm really going to be a good podcaster. It sits here. Wow, you don't mess around, do you? No, it sits here, gathers dust. Every couple months, <laughs> I have to clean it with a Q tip because it's all these little. And, and I don't dare touch any of the dials because I wouldn't know how to set it back. So, oh, God. So. Yeah, you don't know. That is one thing that I learned in the beginning. As soon as you have everything set the way that it, it sounds great, <laughs> don't touch anything. Or take a little marker and mark where the dials are or just take a picture with your mm -hmm. phone. Mm -hmm. That way, if anybody gets in here and messes with any of your dials, you know where they're supposed to be. Yeah. Now, you're <laughs> using a PC, right? I am. Yeah, yeah, so I had some, when I started this podcast, I, I got a Windows 10 laptop thinking, okay, I'll, I'll learn Windows 10 and dedicate this laptop to the, to the podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, the guy that set it up for me, I, I got one of these kids that freelance out of, like, the local guitar center shop. Yeah. Uh, and he, he set it up, it's working perfectly. He goes home, turn everything off, come in the next day, doesn't work. He comes oh, back, no. sets it up again goes home, come in the next day, doesn't work. It just, oh, there's God. so many audio settings behind the scenes. It's just, you know, uh, and so I took it into the Mac place and I said, uh, hey, if I was going to shoot a um, <laughs> Windows laptop, <laughs> should I use a shotgun or a pistol? You know, and, and I got a used Mac. I mean, it was a 2011 Mac. So it was eight years old at the time. And uh, it, not one glitch in five. You're in episode five forty one. Not one glitch. <laughs> so. Well, that worked. Are you, you know, real techie? I've... How do you keep your Mac going or your PC going? Is it Windows ten? It is Windows 10 Pro. I I think since the last time we spoke, I had a I have a custom built uh, PC now. Ooh. Well, I know, fancy pants, yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to try to future-proof myself and be mm -hmm. ready and able to do really anything that my clients needed me to do with video or, you right. know, audio. So I had I went to a Digital Storm and I built a custom studio workstation. Is it water-cooled, so, like a uh, gaming? <laughs> the, it could have been had I wanted it, but that right. requires maintenance. You have to yeah. change the fluids out like every six months to a like year. A car, and I didn't want to yeah. have to. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to have to mess with that. So, you know, I custom built this this beast out here and it's been, you know, and to, and to back up, I've never had any issues with my PCs with any of the software. So I, I thought you were going to talk about the fan noise because the fan noise well, is one thing. Yeah, that's always I, I heard just, you, yeah. said, you just put the thing outside in the hall or something, right? I, yeah, I, and I've tried a few different PCs just to try to get to reduce the fan noise, mm -hmm. but I don't care what anybody says. If there's a fan in it, it's going to make noise. Right. I, I mean, even the most, you know, quote unquote, silent of fans is still going to be picked up by the microphone. And that just completely distorts your voice if you're trying to remove it in post. So I just moved the thing outside of my room and that has solved all my problems. So, <laughs> so if you, you know how they tell you to, to just turn your recorder on and then leave the room. So what's the the noise floor in your room and tell them about noise floor and room tone and stuff. The noise floor in my room, uh, last I checked, peaks at about maybe 57, neg negative 57 dB. So you still and have to process a little bit. For audiobooks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because even negative 57 isn't really in, in relatively, it's not very loud. It's not something that's very even audible to the human ear, but to meet specific requirements like audible or ACX, you have to be at negative 60. So in order to do that, you have to employ sometimes some noise reduction plugins or 
I mean, even my DBX is great, but I, like I said, I do not want to touch that noise gate because <laughs> any, if I add any more, it's just going to completely distort my voice. So I use plugins, uh, one of which is from Waves. It's an NS1 is what it's called. That's what I got. I did what yeah, you told me. Yeah, it's fabulous. I recommend it to anybody because it's, it's so subtle. I mean, you could crank that puppy all the way up and it doesn't really distort your voice that much. But Did it's you try very, what, very... I, what happened to me where I just turned it on at zero and it still uh, reduced the noise? No, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to do that today. But that's nice to know that at least if it's on, even if it's set to zero, it's still helping you to reduce that noise floor. Now, people might be a little confused because they, I, you said, well, I'm at 57 and I need to get to 60. They're like, wait a minute, 57 is less than 60, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's a negative number, so uh -huh. you have to think the smaller the number, the louder it is. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, so yeah, I got mine uh, well below 60. And I built myself a little, uh, one of those portable studios out of PVC pipe, and I got the big heavy blankets, oh, yeah. and it's amazing. Yep. If, you're, if you're outside in my living room and you clap your hands, it sounds one way. You go in this mm. thing. And it's only like four by six feet, something like that. And you clap yeah. your hands and it just goes dead. Boom. And that's, yeah. uh, you know, so that's, but it's not soundproof though. You can still hear the dogs barking and everything else. Oh, for sure. But it's great at reducing probably the reflection mm -hmm. of noise bouncing around your room. Mm -hmm. So it reduces your echo. And it also probably reduces your noise floor. All the good things that you need a recording space to do for you. Yeah. Now, do you have to... Uh, those specific requirements for audio books, like if you're mm -hmm. doing a commercial, does the radio station care about it or uh, those same things? I generally add a little bit of noise reduction to everything just mm -hmm. because I'm just that person. I want to make sure that it, there's no, you know, errant sounds that aren't supposed to be in there mm -hmm. in there before I send it over to anybody. But for audiobooks, of course, it's going to be a little bit, no, I'm going to be a little bit more i put a little bit more attention into what I'm doing, but for commercials and stuff, um, the noise floor in here really isn't that high to begin with, but I always add just a touch just to be sure. But I mean, uh, did the, are they, are they s s real pissy about it? Oh no, no. I've never had a complaint about noise in my room and I'd like to keep it that way. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I mean, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to say, okay, the audio books were extremely exacting stuff. Right. Yeah, they the don't give me any specifications. And, and what about the uh, the audio courses you do and the telephony stuff? Mm, nope, we don't get any specifications for those. It's very rare that we do. And so, I say we, I mean me. I don't yeah. know about much about everybody else, but every other job that I've done, I've never received any specifications for how the file needs to sound, any other requirements uh, for the formatting, no. So you can do lots of work without hitting the perf perfection that you got to have for the yeah audio books yeah. are a completely different mm -hmm. animal when it comes to formatting the files for sure so any equipment that you like wish you would get in the future or you know eyeing and oh my gosh i almost pulled the trigger at the end of this year but i didn't <laughs> because i i don't know my gut just said no not yet <laughs> But I wanted to get the Neumann U87 microphone. Oh, yeah. Neumann. You, are you familiar with that one? Well, I just uh, have heard all the, the people talking about it's like the Rolls Royce or something. But it's like $3,600. Uh. <laughs> it's quite the chunk to bite off for sure. So I, um, maybe in the future. See, the thing is about all this technology stuff, uh, it costs 10 times as much to get 3% more improvement. You know, right. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the nobody will know the difference. I'm hearing my phone ringing there, but I'm not answering because I call you the angel of voiceover. I'm always going <laughs> to think of you like that. So, um, so the bulk of your business is audio books or commercials or what, you know, what, uh, what's the breakdown uh, for someone like you with, and the, and there's, there's some classification for your type of voice. Like, are you a certain type of voice? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know if there is a particular title uh, for my type of voice, but, uh, you know, typically I call myself just a neutral accent American female. <laughs> Maybe. And I hate to say this, but then I also... I you go up to a also... bar and say, and uh, when you meet oh, somebody... Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, hi. Um, uh, I'm... <laughs> 
I'm Tom. Who are you? Well, I'm a neutral. Because <laughs> you have to describe your you have to describe your voice in all of these profiles and stuff to have to be on. But you know the part that I hate the most is that I have to put myself in the middle aged category. Oh no, you're you're ah. only like twelve years old. I've seen you. Well, right. thirteen, but who's counting? <laughs> so but, what was that uh, thing? Neutral what? Neutral, uh, neutral accent. American female, and I'll typically throw in like motherly or you know <laughs> nurturing, warm, buttery. <laughs> buttery. I like buttery. I think I'm going to stick with buttery. Motherly, warm, buttery. <laughs> <laughs> but most of the work that I do is what is called long form, which is the long, you know, because a lot of people like to do the short little commercials, mm -hmm. you know, 30 second spots, stuff like that. I do better with the longer stuff. So again, the e learning, audiobook narration, the bigger projects, PowerPoint narration, you know, everything that is hours long. Or the short ones very tiny amounts of money compared to it the depends long ones? on it depends on what the purpose is and where it will be played and for how long because then you'll have to add the appropriate rights and all of that stuff but um so no not really it doesn't uh, i guess it just depends on where it's going to be played is really the determining factor for those shorter ones because it, you know the appropriate rights could be one amount uh, could be another amount Okay, I'm just, I'm working on my description. Um, Over-the-top accent, uh, <laughs> non-neutral, American male, idiotic, childish, and goofy. <laughs> okay, good. Don't use buttery, because that's mine. No, no, buttery is not me, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so is that, uh, that Neumann ever going to happen? Mm, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to will it. <laughs> I am going to will it into. Uh, will you keep your Sennheiser or sell it to, to finance? Oh the no, employment? I'll keep I'll keep the Sennheiser because the Sennheiser is going to be, I think, good for some of the uh, maybe the shorter stuff, and the Neumann would be, I think, better suited for some of the longer stuff, which is what I do mainly anyway. So I guess I'll have to see, but um, definitely going to keep the Sennheiser. It's good to have backups anyway. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely good to have backups on everything because you never know when something's just going to explode. Now, the Neumann is a condenser mic or yes. dynamic? Yeah. Well, we're all going to we're going to put all our collective screw the commute thoughts together for Neumann to hit <laughs> you. And I don't know where are you yes. live in Arizona or somewhere. Yeah, I'm in Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix Arizona. Mm -hmm. What's the temperature there today? Uh, today it's not that bad, actually. I think it's 60, it's 55 degrees. Oh, look at you. Yeah. We're only 51 here. So, um, yeah, but, but it does get roasting hot. So what do you do with air conditioning? It does. The summertime is very difficult. I have to do a lot of early morning recording mm -hmm. or a lot of late afternoon recording. And what I do is when the air conditioner is on and during the summer, that's about 85% of the time, maybe even 90% mm -hmm. of the time. I'll do my editing at that point. And then once it's off for, you know, it's 10 minute intervals, then I'll get some recording done. So summer it, jobs take a whole lot longer to get done, but I can still get it done. Yeah. Well, you, you, you're getting it done. So, so tell yeah. us a little bit about uh, maintaining your voice. And maintaining your different voice times a day that you're better or worse or. Uh, I would say definitely warming up beforehand, just, you know, doing some tongue twisters and some, you know, ah, kind of, you know, <laughs> warm it up, clear all of the morning gunk out, basically. I have trouble you know, with that. Yeah, I, yeah, I really do. I think everybody. It's just mm -hmm. a, it's a human thing. And then to make sure that you're hydrated. Hydration mm -hmm. is absolutely key because, again, in voiceover, we have sticky mouths, which I always say my mouth is just sticky and I don't like it. But to get rid of all of those little pops and clicks that you hear in your voice hydration, uh, water with lemon, you know, hot tea, there's throat coat teas, there's breaks. You have to take breaks, especially if you're doing long form like I do. Some of the longer reads, breaks are a necessity. That way you don't fry your voice and rest, of course. Have you practiced inaudible breaths or how do you deal with breaths? In audiobooks? Mm-hmm. 
I always tell the people that I work with that a natural, normal breath is perfectly fine because an audiobook is a human reading a book to you. So to have a audible breath, I think, is fine as long as it's not distracting and just like, oh, you know, like uh -huh. a big gulping frog breath. I mean, uh -huh. I think it's fine. Those big gasping ones you should probably remove, but a nice natural breath, I think, is perfectly fine in an audiobook. So you haven't specifically practiced inaudible breathing? I have not mastered it yet, no. Oh, mm -hmm. but have you... In, inaudible breathing. Work, have you worked on it, is the question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I think learning where to take a breath, and that's usually at a comma, is to take a nice little pause and, and breathe. But the big breaths usually come at the end of the sentence and those I remove. But it does take a little bit of practice. It really does to kind of train yourself to take, to maybe lean away from the mic when you take a breath so it's not as audible. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few things that you can do to reduce the sound of breaths. But again, I don't, I don't think that a breath sounds bad in an well, audiobook. What kind of mouse do you use? Mouse? Yeah, you use the mouse on your computer, right? Yeah, I use a wireless uh, Logitech. It's a, a trackball. Oh, mouse. So ball, it yeah. actually, yeah. So it doesn't move around, but I just move the ball around with my thumb. I really like it. Yeah, I never it's, got it's used really to it. handy for editing. Well, the you know I've been doing this con constantly for thirty some years. I mean, all day, seven days a week on a computer, and yeah. and the audio book, my hand hurts now. My thumb hurts <laughs> because I was every every place, you know, I chose to remove the breaths and put in room yeah. tone on yeah. every place for the whole book. And it was only a, a, a 50 minute read, but my thumb is killing. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to exercise your thumb. I, know. I gotta figure, figure that out. So so uh, now I hired you. To, uh, to help me with a, s a specific thing. But tell mm -hmm. people about your courses and uh, how, how you can help them if they were interested in improving their recording. You know, a lot of people here have their own books already and courses mm -hmm. and, and make audio products, but uh, they, they, not to the level you do. So tell them about all the stuff you could help them with. Well, first and foremost, I realize that different people like to learn different ways. So I offer a few different ways for people to learn what they want to learn. And one of which is the courses that I offer. And I have a course on getting started on Fiverr, which has been a great place to find voiceover work. Um, another one on Upwork, how to get started on Upwork. And then I also have that one be, on... That used to be Elance. Yeah. Yeah. And then I also have... Uh, one on meditation, because meditation is very big right now. On how? Uh, okay, tell me about that one. Uh, so is it because I'm I'm coming out with a marketing meditation that I'm having uh, somebody else do, but I'm you know kind of providing the script. So uh, mm -hmm. is your course, and uh, I'm definitely going to buy that course for them to to help them. So so oh. what's it about? Uh, is it how to talk in the meditation or how to find meditation yes. work or how to write it, meditation scripts from scratch or what? This course is mainly about the different types of what I call healing with your voice. And that encompasses meditation, affirmations, uh, sleep stories. And I go through the different processes of how to kind of get in the right mindset before you start, because recording narration uh, for meditation is unlike any other really, because it's a lot slower, a lot breathier. Mm -hmm. And, but I mainly go through how to narrate it, how to add music, how to edit it. And then I go through, of course, the ASMR a little bit too. And uh, that was really fun to record. What's, what's ASMR? ASMR is Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. <laughs> oh, man. And <laughs> it's basically uh, a, like a tingling sensation that is triggered by different types of audio sounds. Some people prefer the sounds of like nails tapping on plastic or the slime that kind of crackles and creases. Some people like whispering. And what I go over in the course is just the different types of ASMR there are because I have been asked in the past to whisper as for the ASMR, um, 
<laughs> and it's, I feel so silly. Oh, sorry. I feel, I feel so silly saying it, but it does happen. And it's something that you can definitely offer, not only in the whispering, but if you know how to make these sounds, that is another way for you to earn an income, I guess. But, um, but that's basically what I review in this course is how to narrate, edit, add music, or different types of healing with your voice, meditations, affirmations, and ASMR. But not how to write them? No, Somebody I Somebody else I is actually, giving you the script then, right? I would say eight times out of 10, the client provides right. their script. And it's better if they do, because that gives them the opportunity to make it more personalized for mm -hmm. their own focus or purpose, which is what meditation is all about. But I do have someone that I found um, that writes meditation scripts. So I do have some on hand. If someone says, ah, I don't care, you know, do you have something like this? And then I can narrate it and add some music to it and maybe make it into a video for them. And mm -hmm. they're happy campers. Awesome. Okay. So boy, this has been uh, very informative for everybody. So how do they get a hold of you? The best way to reach me is uh, through my website, which is voiceoverangela.com. Or you can email me at Angela's Voice Talent at Gmail. And I'm on all the social medias as Voice Over Angela, apart from Twitter, which is Angela O underscore V O. And you, you work them um, constantly? Because I, I, all I ever saw was the YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. I post on every one of those pretty much every day. Wow. I'm still getting into TikTok, though. Oh. I'm just getting into, I'm a big TikTok lurker. But I'm just starting to get into making videos for TikTok. Have you done uh, Instagram Reels? No, I haven't. And I should because that is, you know, I think that is the way that people are starting to go for their social media fixes are the short videos. Oh, boy, are they addicting, too. You can blow a they couple are. hours and <laughs> no, no I know no I trouble. do. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> well, boy, I, again, I want to publicly thank you for helping me take my uh, business to the next level with you know, really clear uh, understandings. Uh, now, I booked uh, one. Of, what, what is it called that I booked with you? Is it four consultations or something? I don't You have a name? Yeah, for that? I have I have one on one sessions for a one 30 minute session. And then I also have mentorship programs and they're available in a four week or a 12 week. And then we meet once a week to talk about whatever it is that you need to, whatever challenges you have, or, you know, help to set, set up your studio with the appropriate equipment or anything, anything that you're having troubles with, or just to answer some questions. And I, I'll tell you what, it's, folks, it's uh, been wonderful. She's extremely clear, extremely accommodating and uh, can't recommend Most of the her. time. <laughs> to me, clear most so of the far. time, not accommodating, clear <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> Well, she's uh, with me. She's been just great, and I couldn't wait to have her back on, especially since I'm in the middle of this audio book stuff and uh, can't say enough about her. So thanks so much for coming on, Angela. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, everybody, check out voiceoverangela.com and mm -hmm. um, check out her courses. Uh, it will really take it to the next level. All right, everybody, Thank we'll you. catch you all in the next episode. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Was that, a, was that a neutral female voice I just heard? Yeah, it was. It was. was. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> All right. Get you later. All right.